Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome to the 2017-2018 Teacher Workshop Series. Today we're working on number 32 on the new General Curriculum Math Subtest. This is a really fun problem. It's involving 3D shapes and 2D shapes. A great geometry problem to take a look at. Very common on the elementary and middle school teacher certification exams in mathematics. Great stuff. We're going to start by reading over number 32 and then working through some of these ideas in geometry, okay? Let's start by reading it over and visualizing what's going on. It says for number 32, the length, width, and height of a rectangular box are each doubled. How does the surface area of the large box compare to the surface area of the original box? Is that large box two times the surface area of the original, four times, 12 times, or 24 times? Hmm. Pause the video now. Read it to yourself. Pause. Read it. You're seeing maybe a length, width, and height going on here, and you may be very tempted to be thinking about volume. Length, width, height. That's volume, right? And we're dealing with a rectangular box, and that's a 3D thing. Well, it's not volume. It's surface area, which is a 2D thing. So you'll notice here when it says box, 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 this is all referring to a 3D image uh, object. And we're trying to, we're going to be using a 3D objects and we're going to be comparing surface area and, and surface area and that idea of area is a 2D thing. So this problem right here, it's going to involve an understanding of 3D objects and 2D objects. And we're going to do some comparison. So I want you to make sure you see that element going on. Now, now starting with the 3D because that's what they give us here this rectangular box here, this original rectangular box, it's a rectangular box, so we could almost imagine it like a, like a box that you would buy at a UPS store if you were moving. And I know it says rectangular, but there's lots of different types of rectangles out there, and one type of rectangular box is a square box. What's nice about a square box, if we were to buy a, a square box at UPS, is that the length, width, and height are all the same. So let's say right now for this rectangular box, it's got a, a length of 1, a width of 1, and a height of 1. Is that fair? And, and then we could, we could think of a, the larger box, three-dimensional object, much larger, but its sides are doubled. So we could visualize that doubling these dimensions right here. Well, the new length would be 2, then we'd have a width of 2, and, and a height I'll put the height over here, a height of 2. So, so now we, we're visualizing the 3D representation of these boxes with length, width, and height. And, and I'm using 1 as a really good starting point because uh, it keeps the numbers small. And, and, it, and also, you know, it's a little visually, it's a little easier to see that we're doubling the dimensions uh, to go from 1 to 2. And now we got to take this 3D stuff and we got to go to the 2D stuff, the area. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these shapes right here and we're going to, we're going to write, represent them as their two-dimensional nets. Remember, a two-dimensional net is a 2D version of a 3D object. So here we have a rectangular box or cube. I'm going to take this cube and I'm going to represent it as its 2D net. And a net is a 2D representation of a 3D object. A net you can cut out on the edges and fold up along the edges and it will form that 3D object. Nets are used to help think about surface area of a 3D object. Here we can take the cube or this rectangular prism and write it as the net and then we can find the surface area of each one of these squares here to find the total surface area of this 3D object. Does that make sense? Well we've chosen um, dimensions of one. So the dimensions of each one of these, uh, uh, these faces of the cube is one by one and area, area is equal to length times width, or area here would be 1 times 1, so the total area of each one of the faces would be 1 unit squared. So that means this has, this is, has an area of 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So collectively, the six faces, each with an area of 1 unit squared, collectively the original box would have a total surface area of 6 units squared. Now we can do the same thing for our second object. Uh, I'm going to draw out those rectangles uh, here, drawing out a real rough, just visualizing this 
one right here. The dimensions are two by two. So the area of each one of these faces of this larger box is four by four, four. They all have an area of four units squared. So collectively, four, there's six faces, and each one has an area of four units squared. Collectively, this has an area of 24 units squared. Is that right? So our, our surface area for this second shape collectively is 24 units squared. And our original shape collectively, the surface area is 6 units squared. And we're asked how much larger when we're comparing the boxes is the large one, I'll call the large one B, to the small one, I'll call that A. How much larger is it? How many times larger is it? Is it 2, 4, 12, or, or 24? Well, you just need to ask yourself, how, how, how much do we have to increase this to get to this? Well, we'd take the 6 and we'd multiply it by 4. Is that right? So we could say B is four times larger than A. Or the, the large box, the large box B here, is four times larger than the, the original box A. B is our answer. If you were to go home and study this, I'd want you to be able to do all that. And then I'd also want you to remember, whenever you're comparing similar shapes, like these ones right here, and, and it involves area. And this one really does involve area of two similar shapes. And it tells you that you're doubling the dimensions of those two similar shapes. I want you to remember that whenever you double the dimensions, you are quadrupling the area, meaning the new area is four times the size of the original one. All right? Okay, team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day, team. Take care. Bye-bye. Team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome to the 2017-2018 Teacher Workshop Series. This year we're holding workshops in math, science, English and history, early childhood education, foundations of reading, ESL and SEI. These are hands-on workshops designed to help teachers pass their teacher certification exams. I encourage you to check them out. We're holding them in Massachusetts, New York, North Carolina, California, New Hampshire, Vermont, Connecticut, and a couple other states. I encourage you to check out an upcoming workshop. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care.